Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer. I'll be your instructor for this course. I've been involved in some type of computing since 1981. Over that time, I've had a lot of experience with different operating systems, with different uh, network infrastructure equipment, with a lot of different types of technologies that we use, both on the internet, both for internal use, and I hope that my skills and my uh, training that I've had will help you in understanding the best ways to be able to work with computing information. In this module, we're going to talk about web browsers and the way in which we navigate. My goal is to make sure you understand some of the subtle differences between the different types of web browsers that you can use. We'll also make sure that you understand the uh, way in which you can navigate, which at least is consistent with whichever web browser or web browsers that you choose to use while doing your work on the Internet. A web browser is considered a part of what we would call a client-server application. What that generally means is that somewhere in the world there is a server. A server, of course, is just a computer. could be your uh, desktop PC if you wanted it to be a server that offers some sort of resource that more than one person can use. That's at least the idea of what we, why we call it a server. It's serving some resource. In this case, it's serving web pages. Now, the complexity of the web pages has certainly changed over time since I first uh, started getting online in the uh, early to mid-90s. And uh, a lot of times you'll see these uh, web servers connected to uh, other types of things like databases, but that's really not something that we're going to worry about how to design a page. But just to let you know, there is a lot of complexity that is, uh, exists today in being able to serve information to you. Now, in that uh, manner, all you have to worry about is having a method of being able to get to that content. And we do that with the web browser. So when you're going through the Internet, and we love to make clouds for the Internet, and we'll talk about how to navigate and find these web servers, you need some page, some, I should say, um, client, that can show you the information that's stored on that web server. The web server has basically just instructional code. That instructional code uh, that's stored in here, that you might think of as a web page, just has data. There's actually not a nice pretty web page stored there. It's just programming code that is interpreted by your browser to be able to draw a page for you to be able to see. That instructional code is generally started off in this thing called the hypertext markup language, and that is just a language, a programming language, that the browser can interpret all of the really cool stuff that it sees in that code and make the page that you want. So that just means that having a web browser is having a tool that can decode the instructions from the web server to present you with the web page. And of course, uh, as the, this code has uh, evolved, the uh, things that we see are just getting more and more incredible. Inside of HTML, there's uh, different languages you might have heard of, things like Java, or maybe uh, you might have heard of people talking about uh, Visual Basic. Again, these are types of uh, little programs that we can put inside of the HTML page and that, again, your web browser hopefully can interpret to make that content available for you. You may also have heard of this uh, cool animation type of uh, software programming called Flash. Uh, and so, basically, when you open up that web page and you type in the address, the address is what we call a URL, a universal record locator. That's the name that we use for the web page. Your web browser is basically going to send a message over the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, and it's going to have in there a GET request, and that GET request is generally there to get the home page. And the home page is the default page. Unless you specify uh, exactly which page you want to see, you're going to get what we call the home page of that website. And, the, and all of this code, all of these scripts, all of the attached pictures, are all going to be sent back from the web server through that uh, programming language of HTML so that you can then have your web browser draw that page. Now that's all we're, uh, we really are looking at is we're just saying, hey, this is our way of uh, being able to have a client, have a software program that can interpret the code and show you the results. Now there are different types of web browsers. Some of the ones that are the most popular, uh, one that's bundled, that's the word we use, uh, with uh, Windows is called Internet Explorer. Now, they say it's free, 
if you have a licensed version of Windows. And they all have uh, different uh, kind of uh, little subtle options, but they all do the basic same things. Another very popular web browser is called Firefox. Firefox is kind of an open source, meaning that we have an open group of users out in the world who continually try to uh, submit changes to make Firefox even better. Where, like I said, this one here is uh, owned by Microsoft, and they're the ones that make the updates. A third one that came out a few years ago that seems to be gaining popularity is called Chrome. It comes from Google. And, uh, and I'll try to give you some of the very you know, minimum information just so you understand some of the differences. Uh, the fourth one that uh, uh, is somewhat still out there, at least talked about, is Opera. And then the fifth one that you see is mostly for the uh, Mac users, which is called Safari. Now, there is actually a Windows version of Safari that you can use. So let's talk about probably the top two or top three, Internet Explorer and Firefox. You'll see a lot of arguments between uh, people who are fans of both, uh, saying why their browser is better than the other one. What it comes down to is all five of these are able to take the HTML information and turn it into a web page. Some of the uh, differences you might hear is uh, with Internet Explorer, you can uh, use kind of what they call content filtering. If you want kind of uh, being able to put it into a nanny state where you can make sure that uh, uh, adult information doesn't get through or to try to make it a safer uh, browsing experience for your kids, uh, that the Internet Explorer will, through Microsoft and through settings, uh, that a lot of websites uh, uh, cooperate with can be able to uh, tell the browser whether or not it's a page that should be shown or not. They both have the ability to uh, take care of what we call pop-ups, pop-up blockers. Uh, a pop-up is, again, part of the code that comes in, uh, can try to convince your web browser to open up an extra window that you didn't want and put it on top of your screen so that uh, you have to kind of look at that advertisement, kind of hoping that you'll click on it and maybe, you know, get interested in some other product. So they both have, well, most of them have pop-up blockers. Um, Firefox is said to be more secure. That seems to be uh, some, you know, again, back to who is uh, uh, a fan of which, uh, because it does have uh, a kind of a built-in firewall uh, that they try to use with Firefox. Internet Explorer and Firefox also have what's called uh, some version of in-private browsing. Uh, this can be important. One of the things you're going to learn as you use your web browser is that it keeps a history of uh, the places you've gone. And if you're at a computer at work or a computer in a public uh, location, um, then that means that people will be able to know what you've been doing and uh, where you, what sites you've gone to. Uh, and so, again, they both have settings that you can help protect yourself, but we'll talk a little more about that when we talk about uh, uh, protecting yourself online. Uh, Chrome is told to be kind of a, a little bit more lightweight. Not a lot of the uh, extra features uh, that um, I just talked about, like there's no content filtering with Chrome, but people claim that it is just fast, that uh, your web pages will uh, load much faster for you um, th than you would have had otherwise with some of the others. Opera, uh, you know, it's been years since I've used this one. It was one of the first ones, I think, to uh, introduce tabs uh, into the uh, browsing experience, and I'll talk about those. And like I said, Safari is a uh, choice. By the way, you can also have a Firefox for Mac users as well. So uh, maybe I'll put uh, Firefox down here as another option. And, uh, and these are, of course, web browsers that offer pretty much the same features I just talked about, but they were designed for people using the Apples, the, what we used to call the Apples, but the uh, Mac versions of uh, PCs because they have a different operating system. So the subtle differences might be just in a couple of the extra little features. Now, I will tell you, and I've seen this enough times, that some web pages were designed for certain types of explorers or browsers. And uh, what that means then is that the people who are developing the web pages have their idea of uh, what they think may be the most popular web browser that's going to be used and try to add in extra little features you know, the way in which they can present graphics or uh, animation or any of these things that they like to do. And that might mean that they're customized for one browser over the other. I have gone to some web pages where it just doesn't load very well 
or it doesn't run the way it wants to if I use, let's say, Internet Explorer. And so I'll go to that same web page with Firefox and find that it runs brilliantly all the way to uh, you know, every action that they have. So it's good for you to be able to go out there and maybe get some of these other browsers. They don't take up a lot of storage. So that you can also uh, have that experience of being able to see uh, the differences between uh, web pages, how they load in one over the other. So uh, again, it's just something to think about. There's no, I guess I could say, perfect web browser. Um, now, how we use each of these. When you open up the program, the beginning part of it is generally going to um, ask you to put in a URL, as I said, the Universal Record Locator. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about these domain names. That's really what it is. It's a domain name. And uh, we'll talk about uh, you know, how that's kind of broken down. And uh, then when you uh, hit Enter, or just click on the uh, actual uh, little, uh, maybe it, some could be an enter, it could be a magnifying glass, to search for that web page. That's where you're going to generate the HTTP GET and send the request to that web server to retrieve that web page. And then it's going to load in the uh, main display window that you see here. Now, on some web browsers, they are programmed with what's called a home page. A home page is an automatic page that's opened anytime you start the web browser. That's something that you can actually change. Uh, we'll show you how to change it. And that way you can have whatever is your favorite page be the first page you see when you open up that browser. From there, your interaction with the web page depends on the type of objects that have been inserted. Now again, remember these are graphical representations of code. You often will see a text box. The text boxes are generally going to be in this rectangular shape. Often you can uh, see the mouse cursor blinking of where you're at, so you can enter text, and it's just designed for the input from your keyboard. Other types of uh, things you might see are uh, links that you can click on. As an example, uh, with um, whatever page, sometimes um, with Google, you might see this really cool picture uh, that they're uh, wanting to uh, have some sort of uh, daily uh, you know, information, you know, maybe some famous person's birthday. And if you move your mouse over it, uh, you can actually see the uh, mouse uh, kind of change uh, in its um, shape. And, uh, and it, again, it depends on the browser, but it uh, gives you an indication that it's a, uh, an action that you can click on. We often call it a hyperlink. A hyperlink is really just another URL that you want to go to. And it would have been the same as if you would have taken that hyperlink and typed it up here in that front on the uh, URL address space. But it's a shortcut for you to be able to go to the next page. Sometimes those hyperlinks have code that asks the uh, actual uh, web browser to open it up in a different page. And I'll talk about that little differences when we uh, talk about how to navigate. Um, and some, of course, are going to be action buttons. These action buttons uh, could, again, be a, a link to a different web page. It could be an action, I'll write action down here, to do some sort of work or computation for you. With the example of Google, if you type something in the text box as some sort of uh, topic you're searching on, and then you click on this button, that action is basically sending this data back to Google to their servers to look for all of the websites that might contain those words. Just as a side note, this one would only return one page instead of a list where uh, Google's just going to say, well, we think this is your page that you want. All right, some other parts of, uh, of the web browser that uh, you'll see is uh, what's often called a menu bar. That's one where you have the series of words that uh, present a list of, uh, of uh, configuration or other tools. Uh, you also have uh, what's often called a toolbar that can be used to uh, provide shortcuts. For instance, if you wanted to go to your home page, you could click on that little house and you would go there. If you wanted to uh, print what you see on the page, you could click on the picture of the printer. So uh, little tools to make your browsing experience work uh, much faster. Um, and depending on companies uh, that are that uh, like Google or like Yahoo, they often have their own customized toolbars that you could install. And those toolbars would show up somewhere in the top that uh, may or may not be something you want, by the way. You've got to be careful. You've got to read everything that you click on to know whether or not you want to install these things. For instance, the uh, Google uh, search bar, our toolbar, 
has a, a little place where instead of you having to go to the home page for Google, you could just type your text up here and hit enter, and then it would uh, take you to the resulting searches. In fact, some of the, uh, and again, this is where you have to understand that uh, you have to decide if you want these extra items on your uh, browser. Uh, sometimes when you copy and paste data, the uh, Google toolbar automatically puts that copy and paste or that copied data up here so that it uh, is ready for you to do a search, uh, which actually for me was a convenience. I, I liked that as a feature. I just talked about this thing called the URL, the Universal Resource Locator. And what it does is uh, represent what we, uh, in the world of computing, we call a fully qualified domain name. Now, the domain names are how we identify with uh, easy to read words the location of a server or a computer that we want to connect to. And you often will see, for example, this type of uh, address that you would put into your, uh, into your address bar, Microsoft.com. All right, but you might also see some people just type Microsoft.com and not put the www in the front. By the way, the www was designed to represent uh, the World Wide Web. So let's break this down. First, we start off with the domain extensions. And technically speaking, and when we're searching for this uh, address that you want to go to, we actually start doing our search from the left, or I'm sorry, from the right-hand side of the name. And that's because we have this domain hierarchy that uh, actually starts with a dot, and then it's broken down by these domains. Now, these domains originally were designed to represent certain types of websites. The .com was usually a business-related website. The .edu was often some sort of a college. Anything that dealt with networking technology was, or communications uh, technology was the .net. And, uh, and as we started running out of these, um, uh, basically, I shouldn't say we didn't run out of names, but a lot of names started getting reused and reused and, or, or, you know, wanting to be used, but you could only have one person with those names. And so sometimes somebody who was uh, maybe in a uh, business but had a name they wanted to use would uh, register with a .NET, which uh, was not appropriate because they were a business, not a telecommunications type of a company. And, uh, but we were kind of lax on the rules about uh, being restrictive. As an example, uh, when I first uh, started uh, trying to make my own pages, I wanted my page to be the initials of my name, my, my first initial, middle initial, and my last initial, KLM. So I tried to get KLM.com. Well, unfortunately, somebody beat me to it. A rather large airline over in Europe uh, had already registered that name. So if I wanted it, I would have had to make it KLM.net, but uh, that wasn't actually appropriate for the way in which I wanted to use that. Now, since then, we have uh, a large number of other types of extensions. And by the way, .gov was usually a government uh, agency. Uh, militaries were .mil. Uh, for us, you know, we're starting to see new things like .biz as an example. Another example might have been a .org, which was usually a nonprofit organization. Uh, and these extensions are still undergoing changes. The, the reason I'm bringing it up is that if you get uh, somebody says, hey, you should go look at this website, and you can look at this uh, domain that it's underneath, then it gives you an idea of what the content might be like. As an example, there was uh, some argument about whether or not to create a .xxx, uh, which, uh, if, you know, being a parent, I think that's great because I can block all these .xxx through my web browser, when so many adult uh, industries are using dot-coms, uh, which uh, I guess they can argue they're a commerce, but uh, still, it's uh, just, you know, you're wanting to sometimes also protect yourself. Um, you know, I, another one is a dot-tv, uh, which uh, would certainly be, uh, I'm assuming, for TV type of content. Now, it's somehow, in the United States, it uh, seems as though um, people think we kind of own the, uh, the uh, domain extensions. It is a worldwide organization that is trying to come up with these standards. Uh, but sometimes uh, when we're doing, going to a business like a dot-com, if it's not a U.S.-based business, uh, a business in another country, we started adding country codes into this. 
so that we would uh, be able to have uh, the indication that maybe we're going to a different country's version. For example, at Microsoft.com or Google.com, it's not uncommon to see a .uk at the end of that, so that you knew that was probably the United Kingdom's version of Microsoft.com's homepage. Uh, and that was useful uh, because, you know, a lot of the content was in English. If I'm in France and I'm going to the .fr, then I expect to see that page in French so that uh, people who are French speaking will be able to see the content rather than having to do some translations. All right, so we start off at least with those domain extensions. And then we uh, continue to read from, uh, as I said, from right to left. And so what we do is we then go to that location. So um, maybe a better example would be the, this Yahoo. So here's Yahoo and underneath the dot coms. So you can see again how we're going from right to left. Now, I, in this example, I didn't put a www in there for Microsoft. Um, and, and so often people will say, well, do I need it? Because if I leave it out, I often end up going to that by default. That's a function of the web browser taking you to what we usually call the home page. That World Wide Web is generally where the home page is located. But with companies like Yahoo or Microsoft, let's, uh, let's put a, a, another little uh, company over here from the dot com of Microsoft. Uh, they have other pages that you might want to go to. Uh, and so we I continue to name it with this extra domain. In fact, let me put it down here. You could go to TechNet dot, and I'm just going to use MS for Microsoft, Microsoft.com. Uh, you would actually spell out the whole word Microsoft. Uh, there could be training dot Microsoft.com. And so what you're doing is you're actually going to a different domain uh, with a different home page. And that's all different than the www. But for the most part, www is where you're going to start. And then you can usually get from that home page to these other locations. Now, as you're navigating your browser, and again, like I said, there's a variety of, uh, of different setups as far as where all these little objects are, depending on the browser you're using. We're looking at an example of um, Internet Explorer here. Uh, they are going to have navigation arrows. That's going to be these uh, little sets of arrows here. On some browsers, they may be, well, most of them, they're on that uh, left-hand side by the address bar that we want to use. And so here's the idea that, you know, you're at Google.com to start with, and you decide to type in something new. So you, uh, you uh, wipe out what's here, and uh, then you go to um, your www. let's just say abc.com, and you hit enter, and it takes you to that web page. And then this little back arrow is going to light up. And what that means is that if you're done with that page and you want to go back to Google, instead of uh, having to retype the Google name, you could just click on this little black arrow, and it would take you back to the previous web page. Now, when I go back to the previous web page, this little arrow is going to light up because that's going to give me the chance to go back to the abc.com, the page I just left to go back from. And, and you can hit this back uh, many times. So if you've gone to uh, many different websites uh, in a row, you could uh, keep hitting the back arrow to get back to your uh, websites that you were at before. There's also going to be a place for favorites. Now, favorites, uh, generally, are, you're going to see a little star. Uh, not doing a very good job at my five-pointed star. Let me try that again. I should be able to draw a star. Let's do it the old way. All right, you're going to see like a little star. And uh, that little star is your way of opening up a place called favorites so that if you did go to abc.com and you wanted to uh, remember where that place was or it's a web page you think you're going to go to again, under the little favorites, you could add it so that you wouldn't have to remember what that link was. Uh, and that's great because, as I said, um, you know, it's, we're trying to make this uh, world of uh, browsing so much easier. So what do you do? You just uh, say, okay, add that to my favorites. Maybe next week you, you say, oh, where was that uh, place that uh, I liked? And Well, you just open up your favorites. You'll see the list of what you've chosen. Hopefully you remember which one it was. If you have a lot of them, and you click on it and it takes you right there. Those items that you click on to get from one page to the other, as I said, are hyperlinks. Generally speaking, when you see a hyperlink, um, and, and this is uh, something I'll talk more about in security. When you see a hyperlink, uh, you're going to see uh, you know, something that says my website, and it's uh, usually uh, blue and underlined. That's just the uh, kind of standard format of a hyperlink. So you know it's not 
just regular text. And hopefully to kind of warn you, you know, don't click on it unless you want to go to a new location. Now, something I want to tell you at the bottom of your web browser, or if you leave your mouse, uh, depending on the web browser you use, if you leave your mouse over the website, you might actually see the URL of where that link is going to take you. And that's kind of also, uh, to me, kind of a safety indicator. Because um, if I move my mouse over it, and then I see what it's actually going to take me to, it lets me know if it's something that I can verify. A lot of times in our email, you might see a link to uh, maybe another hyperlink that says, uh, you know, your bank. And, uh, and so you're saying, oh, great, I need to go to my bank. And you move your mouse over it, and it's actually some, uh, we'll call it www, some hacker site dot com, where they're trying to fool you into going to places that you uh, thought was legitimate but actually weren't. So the hyperlink contains words that are presented on the web page, but in the background, the code is showing them the actual URL of where it's going to go if you, if you actually click on it. Like I said, your history is there as a benefit to you. By uh, putting your history in place, what we're hoping is that uh, if you uh, remembered, uh, let's say, last Saturday, I was at a uh, uh, museum site and I want to uh, go back to it and I don't remember what it is, you can open up the list of your history. It's usually organized by each day. Or if it's a long time ago, it might say last week. And, uh, and you open up that day's history, and then you can go through the list of all the places you've been to. Now, there's also a number of plugins that can also be helpful for you. As an example, if one of your links was going to open up a PDF file or a Word document, uh, rather than you having to download that file and open it in that program, you often will have a plugin that's uh, put into the browser. And that plugin would uh, allow you to have a viewer so you could see that document while still using just the web browser. Uh, some plugins can be dangerous. Some plugins can be, I mean, extremely helpful. If there's a, a link to uh, email somebody, uh, it's great to have a plugin that could maybe help open up the right um, email client that you're going to use and be able to uh, start generating your emails. So we're going to show you some demonstrations of how to search with a variety of different search engines. Bing is certainly one of them. Uh, but uh, basically the idea is, is that with a search engine uh, that you're going to come up with uh, the text of what you want to search for. Now different search engines will have uh, a variety of methods of being able to uh, present you with search options. They almost all will have a text box where you'll type in your uh, search terms. And, uh, and then, of course, hit enter, and it would result in a, a series of uh, uh, websites that might uh, be what you're looking for. Often, uh, some of those sites are up on the top of the list because they either really are what you're looking for. Some might be at the top of the list because they're uh, paying for extra advertisement. Uh, but uh, we'll leave that for the demonstration to show you how to do searches. What is important is that sometimes you may see a link that you like, and you want to look at it, but you don't want to lose the um, actual uh, page that you're on with all these search results. So when you see something like, um, you know, and again, you'll see like some www.abc.com, uh, and uh, often you'll see some text below it that tells you a little bit about why that might be. And this is underlined so that you can uh, click on it and go to that uh, actual website. Well, what I want to tell you is that when you move your mouse over the top of this link and do a right click, on that link. It will not immediately take you to that website. One of the options you'll have when that, uh, and you're going you're to have a little menu pop up. And this little menu is going to, uh, depending again on the browser, the order of these will be different. One will say something about open uh, in a new window. Uh, one will say open in a new tab. The reason I bring it up is that I often do this. I'll just choose the open in a new tab because here, this is the page you were on that uh, showed you all of your search options. This is another tab. And basically what it is is it allows you to have multiple web pages open without having to have multiple Internet Explorers or Firefox windows open. It's easier than having to keep switching open windows uh, that to uh, just click on the next tab and say, hey, that's what I wanted, and, and I still have my search results that are there. Uh, and you can do that multiple times and have a lot of tabs open. So 
Uh, it's just a way of being able to say, okay, show me the content. So the uh, content would be in the uh, new tab. And then uh, you still have your search results on the original tab that you started on. And it's easy. You just click on which tab you want to view. Uh, and, uh, and you can go, just go back and forth very easily. Now, sometimes you're going to be asked to download or upload files. When you download files, uh, hopefully you have some sort of antivirus software on your system so that it can scan the file to make sure that it's safe. Uh, and uh, you have to remember, depending on the operating system, that the files that you download will probably go to a folder called Downloads. Something just to, again, uh, that I tell you to think about. You can also, when you get asked about a file, you often will see, um, at least in the newer versions of Internet Explorer, a little box at the bottom that you could say something like uh, run, if it's a uh, executable file, or you'll have a little uh, box here that says save, and has a little down arrow. Now, if you click save, it's going to go to the downloads folder. If you click that little down arrow, you're going to see something that says save as, and with the Save As, you can then uh, decide which folder you want to save the file in so that it may be easier for you to find. Uh, you'll also probably see a button that says something about canceling that option so that you're uh, not downloading a file if you maybe accidentally clicked. And by the way, it is easy to accidentally click some things as you're moving your mouse around uh, a web page uh, and you're just uh, you know, not thinking about it and you, you hit that button and boom, something starts to download.